Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another video in my home theater series because I just got in this new Blu-ray player from Panasonic called the DPUB820. This is a 4K Blu-ray player that supports all of the current HDR modes, including HDR10+, and Dolby Vision. It's a bit pricey at $500, but if you are looking for a player that supports everything, this might be worth taking a look at. We're going to be putting it through its paces here in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this player is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. It is $4.99, which puts it into the premium player category. And if you're looking for something less expensive that supports Dolby Vision, uh, check out my review of the Sony UBP-X700. I'll put a link to that down below in the video description. Uh, that player now is selling for about $160, very inexpensive, and can get you Dolby Vision in 4K and a lot of the performance that you might see out of this. Uh, the one downside with that Sony player, though, is that it doesn't automatically switch out of that Dolby Vision color mode. So if you're trying to play back a DVD or a Blu-ray, you have to go through the menus and adjust the color every time. Uh, this one will adjust colors automatically for you, and it supports the HDR10 Plus that that Sony player doesn't yet support. There is a less expensive version of this one called the UB420. I believe that will also support HDR10 Plus, but it won't support Dolby Vision. So you are paying a premium for getting all of that HDR color support on this player. Now, in addition to playing back discs, the player will also do Netflix, YouTube, and Amazon, and we'll take a look at how all of that works in just a minute. Now, it's got a door here that opens up for when you want to put a disc in. It will automatically open and close that door. Uh, it has a USB port down here, which is only accessible when the door is open. So if you are looking to quickly load and unload media through that USB port, it might look a little bit ugly in your rack there. It does have a single line digital display here that's kind of a throwback to some old VCRs and whatnot. Uh, you can disable that if you want, so you don't have to leave that display on if it's distracting you. It will also light up through the door. Uh, the build quality on this doesn't feel too bad. It's got a nice shiny top to it and it's got a decent weight to it, so it doesn't feel cheap. I do like that you have a power button and an open and close button here at the top, which makes it convenient for when you want to put your discs in and the remote's over by the television set. On the back here, you've got your power input. There is a fan on this, but it's not very noisy. I didn't hear it really at all in my home theater room upstairs, uh, so it will have a little fan running when it is uh, under load or doing something that requires that fan to kick on, but again, not that noisy. Now you've got two HDMI outputs, which is actually common on these devices. And the reason is, is that a lot of folks out there have older home theater receivers that are still capable of doing great audio, but they don't support the copy protection that's on the 4K discs. So what you can do here is output audio to the receiver through this HDMI port, and then use this one to send video to your television screen. If you have a newer receiver that does support uh, the 4K copy protection, you can use the single cable. Uh, but there is an option here again to have two different distinct outputs, one of them just audio, the other one video and audio together. You have a 100 megabit per second ethernet port on here, so this is probably not going to be ideal for playing back Blu-ray rips over your network. You definitely need gigabit for that just to get over the 100 megabits that some of those movies require. Uh, you have a USB 3 port back here as well, which you can use for media just like the port on the front. Over here you have analog audio out and it will uh, break out that digital audio into uh, analog surround audio. So you have an output for your front, your surround, uh, and your surround backs here, your center, and your subwoofer. So it's got its own decoder built in. You also have an optical audio out for running over to your receiver if you want. Just know that you won't get the lossless audio formats like Atmos and DTS HD and whatnot uh, with that optical. You're going to have to use one of the HDMI connectors for the best possible audio quality out of this. And that is pretty much it from a hardware perspective. It is a typical uh, little Blu-ray player. And what we're going to do now is get my little 4K monitor out. I will set everything up and I'll show you how it works. So here is the screen you'll see when you first boot up the player. We're going to jump into setup real quick just so you can see what some of your options are. Uh, there's plenty of things to choose from here on the HDMI modes. 
I did have my player set to auto. It's been successfully detecting all the different display capabilities of the things that I've plugged it into so far. Uh, this is an SDR 4K monitor. It's been working fine here. I have uh, an OLED TV upstairs that successfully got everything configured on that. I also plugged it into a 1080p display just to make sure it would successfully go to 1080p and it's been doing all of those things without any trouble. So for the most part, I think most folks will probably just leave everything on auto and let the player uh, detect what it needs to detect. Uh, but I'll jump through some of the other options here just so you can see what you have to choose from. Uh, 24p mode has been working fine. It's on by auto as default. And if you have a 24p movie, which is most films, it will successfully uh, switch your TV into that mode out of 60 hertz or whatever it's set to and properly get the frame rate going for those films. Uh, you do have the ability to configure that second HDMI output to support video, uh, but it will only do HD video and it won't support HDR. Uh, but if you wanted to get some video out of that second port, you can. Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus are on by default. If you need to turn them off for some reason, you can jump in here and disable them, but it will only switch into those modes when a movie supports that on a disc. Uh, here are the color mode options that you can see here. I'll just jump through these very quickly because I know this is of interest to folks. Uh, so you can see the level of detail you can get at in configuring things. Uh, this option here is something you might want to pursue for Netflix because I was finding with Netflix when I was using it upstairs, it switched into Dolby Vision, but everything was playing back in Dolby Vision. I believe this option will uh, turn off the HDR conversion or the HDR mode for things that don't support HDR on Netflix. The other apps, uh, YouTube and Amazon, were successfully jumping in and out as needed. Uh, you can see some of the other options that you have here. Uh, this was kind of a neat setting because I have an OLED TV upstairs and it will optimize the HDR output uh, for the type of TV that you have. So if you're noticing things are too bright or too dark, you might want to mess around a little bit uh, in this feature to get the right look for what you're looking for. And I believe this would only be on the regular HDR10 mode. Typically Dolby Vision and the upcoming HDR10 Plus that this supports will uh, be a little bit more dynamic in how it approaches the uh, HDR color. But if you're seeing trouble on, on your TV, uh, poke around in that setting. Uh, there's also an HDR setting here on the remote to adjust some of the brightness levels as well, which you might want to play with. Uh, 25p, 50p output is off on my device here by default just because I'm outside of the PAL territories that use those frame rates. Uh, you can see some of the other options here as well. Uh, the video settings are a little more limited just because most of the video settings are in that advanced HDMI thing there. So you can see you've got still uh, mode for pausing video and seamless play options here. Nothing all that exciting to look at. It does support 3D. It doesn't come with any 3D glasses. Uh, it also doesn't come with any HDMI cables either. So you'll need to get an HDMI cable that supports 4K 60 Hertz video. Uh, don't buy an expensive cable. The Amazon Basics cable should be just fine or a cable that's priced around that point. I'm using an Amazon Basics cable on all of my TVs and everything seems to be working just fine there. So that's it for the settings for the most part. All right, let's take a look now at disc playback. We've got a 4K movie here that we're going to pop in. So I'm just going to hit the open close button here. You can see that big door opens up. Uh, when I put the disc in, it will close that door up behind it and the disc will load up. Uh, while it is, I'll talk about the remote control. It's nothing spectacular. It looks a lot like the Panasonic controls that have been around for some time, but it's got a decent weight to it. The player supports HDMI CEC, so you can use your TV remote with it if your TV supports CEC output. So that was working just fine. And we'll get the movie going here and see how everything loads up. Uh, now this monitor is not an HDR monitor, but the player is able to convert the color space uh, to SDR and it seems to be looking just fine here. Of course, it pops a lot more uh, on my big HD television upstairs. So that is uh, how the disc playback works. Now I tested a number of movies on this. The first thing I did is I took out the movie we were just watching here, Star Wars The Last Jedi, and loaded it up upstairs. The player successfully went into Dolby Vision mode and it also successfully passed Atmos Audio over to my home theater receiver and it put the TV into 24p mode. So everything worked just fine uh, from the Dolby Vision standpoint. I then took out a regular HDR movie, popped that in, and it switched out of Dolby Vision into HDR, and then also passed Atmos Audio over for that. So that was a good test. Uh, I then took out a Blu-ray movie, which of course runs at 1080p. Uh, that movie played back successfully. It kept the TV at 4K, so it upconverted it. 
Uh, the movie looked great, nice and sharp, uh, and it also was able to play back lossless audio, and it switched into the right color space on the television. So it switched off the HDR color mode and switched over to the proper color mode for a Blu-ray movie, and that was something that my Sony player did not do automatically, so it was really nice to see that function uh, as I was hoping it would. And then I took out a good old DVD at 480p and popped that into the player. And I'll tell you what, that DVD looked great. It also put it into the proper color mode when I did that. Dolby Digital Audio was working properly. And I was really surprised by how good that uh, low resolution movie looked uh, thanks to the, uh, the encoder here on the player. It really upscaled quite nicely and it really, really looked good. It doesn't look as good as a 4K movie would look, but once you start watching it, you'll be surprised uh, by how really crisp and clear everything looks while you're watching from across the room. It really upscales the 4K quite nicely, and I was very impressed with its disc playing abilities. But to be honest, I really didn't see much of a difference in image quality between this player uh, running with these 4K HDR movies and my much less expensive Sony player. So I think if you are looking at a bunch of old DVDs and Blu-rays that you might want to play, I think there'll be a slight visual edge here over something that costs less. But the newer films, to me at least, uh, looked about the same. Let's take a look now at the streaming options that you have, and you have to pop into the network service option to get there. Uh, you can also hit the internet button on your remote control. Uh, the interface is quite sluggish, as you can see here, but if you were to load up Netflix, you'll get uh, a very familiar Netflix interface here. Uh, I tested Netflix a little bit earlier on the OLED upstairs. It was successfully switching into uh, the Dolby Vision mode, so everything looked great, but I wasn't getting Atmos audio support for things on Netflix that do support Atmos. I was just getting Dolby Digital Plus. Uh, but that said, things really did look nice. Uh, one of the issues I've been having with Netflix on my TV's own app is that uh, Stranger Things was looking a little bit washed out in HDR. It actually looked better on this player, but generally it's a good 4K HDR Netflix client but you won't see the Atmos audio support just yet. Uh, Amazon Prime Video, I think, worked the best on this player. I was able to get my 4K HDR stuff to play, including the Dolby Vision content, and it supported Atmos audio. Uh, YouTube also worked very nicely. It supports 4K at 60 hertz, and it supports HDR video on YouTube as well. And all of that looked and played great here on the player, even though the interface is a bit sluggish. The good news is, though, is that the interface on this player is identical to every other TV-based app you have used. So Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube all feel exactly like what I see on my NVIDIA Shield or my TV's native apps. Now, there are a few other services available, but most of them you probably haven't heard of before. There's a lot of international options on here. So they have a little market that you can browse through to find some other things to install, but there really isn't many other popular services, at least for video. Uh, they do have some music options, including Pandora, Rhapsody, and Shoutcast. Uh, this kid stuff here I've never really heard of before. I can't imagine the games being any fun to play on this, but they actually have a few games that you can install. Uh, one thing, though, I would strongly urge you to do if you have children is to disable this after hours section, because if you don't disable it, it will actually tell the kid how to turn it on, and I don't think you want them seeing that. So what I would do here is go to hide category and make sure they don't see the after hours content. Otherwise, they might find a way in there. Now, it supports Wi-Fi, including 5 gigahertz networks, but I would suggest you plug in via Ethernet if you're able to do that. Uh, the 4K video will certainly work better over a wired connection versus a wireless one, but wireless is an option. Now, one last thing to check out on here, and that is the ability to play back content over the network. And if we go over here to Network Media Playback, uh, what it will do is actually go out and find all of the media sources that I have here. And on my network, I've got a couple of network attached storage devices. I store all of my movies on my MyCloud here, and I can jump into that and find my Blu-ray movies. Uh, one issue I'm finding with it, though, is that it doesn't work so well. Uh, and this is a problem we've seen on a lot of these uh, Blu-ray players when they try to stream over the network. So the good news is is that uh, these Blu-ray MKV files I have stored on the server actually start up pretty quickly. I'm not seeing any real delay over the Ethernet network. It's just coming up and playing. 
uh, but it is not supporting the lossless audio formats that uh, these movies are encoded in. So I'm able to see things but not hear things. And it's also not switching the TV or monitor into 24p mode when we're doing those network playbacks. So it looks like some of the features that it really supports quite nicely on disk are not supported on the network side of things. So you'll probably want to go with an Android set-top player or an Apple TV or something to play back uh, your own media in a more effective way. Now you might get the impression while browsing the Amazon listing for this product that it supports Alexa voice commands and it does but not directly. You have to have an Amazon Echo device or a Google Home and then you can issue commands to those devices and have them executed on the Blu-ray player here. Uh, but there's a lot of hoops to jump through to get it to work. I tried for the better part of an hour to get everything connected. I had to register for an account on Panasonic. I had to agree to three pages of legalese and two different privacy agreements. I had to click on an email confirmation. And after all of that, it was asking me for a device ID. I couldn't figure out how to get this thing attached after all of that effort, and I just gave up. Uh, the voice commands that it does support are you know, pause and play and skip and you can have it launch some of the apps that are built in on there. But to be honest with you, it's so much faster to pick up the remote than it is to issue a voice command and wait for it to get executed. So uh, don't buy this if you are thinking it's going to be an Echo device. Uh, but if you want those voice commands and you can go through the process of setting them up, they'll be there for you. It's just not ideal. So overall, I think this is an excellent disc player. I was very pleased with how uh, nice the up conversion is, especially when you're looking at a 1080p Blu-ray or a 480p uh, DVD. All of that stuff looked great. Uh, the audio support here is excellent as well, so Atmos and all the other things that you might want to do with your high-end movies will work fine through this player. 24p is there as well. And I really liked how it picked the right color mode depending on what I was putting in. So Blu-rays and DVDs worked properly in the right color space. The 4K Ultra HD stuff did as well. When it supported Dolby Vision, it switched to that. When it supported regular HDR, it switched over there. Lots of good stuff on the playback compatibility here, and it will support HDR10 Plus uh, when we start seeing more media encoded with that new format. So all good on that front. Uh, app support here is limited, but the apps that it does support are working quite well. I would like to see Atmos support on Netflix, but otherwise Dolby Vision and the overall video quality of all those apps uh, was working great, and all their 4K HDR features appear to be functional, which was good, so that was hap I was happy to see that. Uh, but I was not pleased with the network playback on here. Uh, so I do have a lot of movies I store on my network, and I was not able to take advantage of those movies uh, like I can do on my NVIDIA Shields and other streaming devices here in the house. That's the only thing it doesn't do well, uh, but if you are looking for a good disc player, this is definitely one to consider. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mike Talbert, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.